Invisible fauna. My brother is an architect, and at that time he had some jobs in Beja. And one day he arrived, and the dog was at the gate. And he thought she was very pretty. And as soon as she saw my brother, she cozied up to him. And my brother liked her as well. And he gave her a bath. And the dog stayed at the job site with him. And then, whenever my brother visited the job site to supervise the work, the dog would accompany him all day long. Then, he started to take a liking to her, and the dog started to become a part of our lives, because he would bring her over to our house on the weekends so she wouldn't stay alone. And we have another dog in our house, a Labrador Retriever. And they became very good friends, and there was no conflict in bringing the dog into the house. And before we realized it, the dog ended up staying, and she spent more time at home than at the job site. And the dog started to get used to living inside a house, which is very different than living in a job site or being a guardian dog. In carrying out my academic activities, sometimes I had the opportunity to take her. And I started to notice that the dog had certain abilities, certain talents. She was good at finding what I was looking for. And in my case, I work with fauna. I work with large animals. At first, she would find traces, such as droppings. And then I started to notice that she had the talent to perform those tasks. And I set out to help her to perfect her talent. Because not every dog has a talent for this. You have to know how to choose them. There is a research team in the United States whose dogs are all rescue dogs. They don't have many purebred dogs because these dogs need to have a special talent. And the talent must be identified. When we got started on her actual training, what we started to do was based on games, with balls, with smells, because dogs have a repertory of smells and they start filtering those smells that they recognize and they have the ability to retain those smells in memory and recall them. Then we started to use animal droppings so that the dog could start to recognize that same smell and it would stick in her mind. So we began to see that the dog had this talent and we started to read up and train her. Because, in reality, we had no one to teach us how to train these dogs. So we started to see that the main thing was to make sure the dog has a talent and start the training with balls. Arrival at tracking site, Alto de la Romera Sabaneta, Antioquia. The idea is to start to look on this side. Every time she sets out, it's a game. She's always alert. When I start to move the equipment, the traps and the cameras, she knows that she's about to go out. So she starts to get ready from the first moment. 
You have to be prepared when you go out with a dog, because people don't understand that a dog can't feed when she's working, because they can have gastric problems, they can twist their intestines and die out in the field. So, on our outings, we would find traces, the droppings, and often even animal hairs. So, we could see that, in her own way, she was showing us what she sensed in her environment. When we go out to the field, we normally take her out with a leash. Although many times I prefer to take her out without a collar or a harness because she can get tangled. She's getting tangled here. Let's set her loose. But once, at a tracking event we attended, the dog almost went off a cliff. And if it hadn't been for the harness, the dog would have fallen some 300 meters. So, for us, the safety of the canine is the most important thing, the safety of the entire team. We can't afford to make any missteps because we can quickly get into problems in dangerous areas because there could be mines or something like that. Here's the scent. Do you see it, Juan? What is it? It's an ocelot by the size of it. Here are the fingers. Yes, this is the place where they drink water. This is one of the places where they come through. Then we can ascertain if the animal is indeed present here. The idea is to keep a record. Note the location so that the traps can be placed further up. We have been working with the dog since approximately 2010. In 2009, we started to train her. We started to see that even though our outings were recreational, she took them very seriously. And so they weren't so recreational for her. And when she picked up a scent, she never got lost. Because unlike a hunting dog, she always remains by your side. Tracking dogs should always remain by their trainer because otherwise it would make no sense. Although there are many tools like the telemetry collars that can help us so that the dogs won't get lost, but it's not the case with these tracking dogs. This is the altura. encontramos. Encontramos. So I started to read up on the technical aspect on the existing literature. There isn't a lot of literature or studies performed in other countries with trained dogs. There are researchers in the United States and in other countries that use dogs for field work in biology and conservation. In Africa, for example, they use them for work with elephants and hyenas and to find mammals that are very elusive and difficult to encounter. Up until now, nothing bad has happened. We are just trying to get our work done and set up working teams with other canines. We are trying to show people that performing this type of work with dogs is successful. It can yield good results in very little time. Really, it's the dog that helps me place the trap cameras because she goes along the paths and find the places where animals transit and she just sits there. It's like a signal. So now I understand and she tells me with her gestures and attitudes, place them here and here in the Vajay where we have done some work, 
and we have seen that where she has shown us is where we have had the most animal sightings. Before, we used to set up tracking stations that lasted two months, and we had few sightings. With dogs, our recorded sightings have greatly increased. Negra, venga, venga, chuncho. We noticed that people would talk about wild animals, but never actually saw them. Unfortunately, here in the Valle, we know our wildlife when we see them run over on the side of the road, but we don't see them alive, which is what we really want. We want them to be alive and remain alive, not in a museum and not on the roads killed by cars. Negra. Venga. Well, I think the idea is to start to go up higher. Because this is pine and we can see them here. And I think that the transition is over there. So, should we go up higher? Yeah, let's consult the GPS. Here we go. The idea is to go up to 2600. Yes, Professor. To 2600 and then down. We start by systematically placing the devices, which consist of tracking cameras, so they can take pictures of those animals on the spot. And then we round up and relocate the traps elsewhere. What we are doing right now is setting up to place some traps. We will try to locate them according to the signals the dog gives us. This place is good. With our experience and by using dogs, we verify their presence and we place the cameras in different places. And after a while, we collect a reading of what the camera will film during a month. And then we review those images. These cameras are activated by movement and by heat. So, when there is heat and movement, the camera turns on, films for a period of time, and then turns itself off. If the animal lingers, it will turn back on until the animal leaves the area. We have been coming to this area with the intention of looking up close at felines in the vicinity of this slope. There are already recordings of felines close to Medellin. It is possible that the feline that laid down the tracks down below is a sign that there are more animals. You have all kinds of animals here. According to our data, we have recorded 25 species, among them mammals and land-based birds. In Colombia, tracking is a fairly recent activity, and there are few professionals doing it here in Colombia, and sometimes the data we collect are not very credible. I have been working on this for over 15 years, and I have seen a lot of fauna, and there is what I call the invisible fauna, which are animal species that are out there in nature, but are hard to observe because they are very elusive. They can easily hide in the vegetation. They are mimetic, meaning that their colors blend into the vegetation. 
and they are difficult to see. So, under those conditions, we have been trying to identify this fauna in their natural habitat. But we have developed a technique, so we have developed a technique, which is what tracking is. What we do is to perforate the cans carrying the bait so that the smell would spread out, but in such a way that the animals can't take it away. What we do with the trap cameras is to see part of the ecosystem under normal conditions, see how they behave in their natural habitat, so there is no need to capture them. For other types of studies, it is necessary to capture the animals, such as to put a tracking collar or take samples or for any number of things. But we really only work with this methodology. And now that obtaining environmental licenses has become complicated, this is a methodology that does not require an environmental license. Since we are not capturing the animals, and we are not changing their lifestyle or chasing them away, nor are we extracting genetic material from them. So it's a technique that we can use without having to get a permit. Ahí está filmando. Bueno. Chao. Listo. Vamos. Vamos, niña. Vale. A month later. They ate all the bait. There is no bait left. Look at what I left the last time. There is nothing here. They ate it all. There is the camera, and you can still smell it. It still smells? This is strictly an academic research activity. We are keeping a record of the fauna present in the Valle in order to generate information. Of what type? Information that will help environmental regulators establish management programs for the species in the area. Because people don't really know what species live near us or live among us. That is, we can develop urban ecology programs for those species. We can prevent animals from being run over, avoid conflicts with animals entering our backyards and our houses. They are there. We can't see them, but they are there. Good. We finished our task. Let's go. Yes. Now let's see what turns up. We will see when we perform the analysis. We will return in a month to change the battery and the memory cards. To see what is there. And after that, we will sit down and view all of the material. And we start to see which animals were sighted and how often, if there are many of them or not, and what they are doing. By using these cameras, we have been able to learn something about the natural history of unknown species. The tail is very short, not as long as the other one. His is much, much larger. In the slopes of the Valle, we have been able to record felines. We have recorded cuatis. We have recorded ferrets. Curacao's, quails, pacas, caterpillars, and some marsupials. More or less, we have a record of 25 species through the work we've done in this area. And there are other groups working in other places. 
So we try not to waste our efforts and have different groups sample the same spot. So we each have a sector that we work on and we share information. We are very active in this sense, in that we work independently because we receive no funding from any agency. It's all a labor of love for us. Working with dogs is very enjoyable because there's an important bond, an attachment to people, and you don't get the same conflicts as when you work in human groups. Dogs help with that. They help to minimize those occurrences. So working with a dog is something that I would call one of the best experiences life has to offer. And when it's on a professional level, it's even better because you're achieving results. You're generating new knowledge through these activities and it's an important part of one's professional life. Sit, sit. It's not all play. After work, then I play with her for a while so that she can dissipate some of that energy and rest. Then you can feed her and give her water, and that becomes like a work routine for her. <laughs> 